Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name's Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we are gonna go ahead and do a garden tour, and we're starting out inside because this is the future fall garden, at least part of it. There's a lot more to come. But what we have here, I wanted to, I showed you the guys this last week, but there's been so much growth in here that I just had to show you kind of what growth these sorts of things are capable of in one week. Uh, if you remember, these had not bloomed whatsoever. Germinated, bloomed. <laughs> these had not germinated at all. And now they're pretty darn big. They are in need of getting put out probably today, at least this pack here and some of these up here. Uh, the kales we still thankfully have some time on. And then same thing, this one even more. <laughs> these are where they're going crazy. So these are gonna be getting planted likely today. And once we get outside, I'll show you where that's at. And then we have our experiment going on down here, which we just did yesterday. And that is our soil starting mix. So I that that's gonna be an upcoming video once we actually know if it works or not. But I have started it, so look forward to that video. Now let's go and look at all the pretties outside. First things first, our peas and beans are doing great. Peas, rather. These ones, I think they've all come up. Oh, no, nope, we're missing one right here. This one, not so much. This one is doing wonderfully. This one here especially is the Golden Sweet Snow Pea. So. And then these ones over here. Doing pretty okay as well. All of those, all of those starts and things right there I'm going to go ahead, I planted them with the intention of planting them here, all along here in the roost out kind of bed. I think I'm fairly confident that this is at least 50 feet long, about 15, 15 to 20 feet wide. It kind of, it kind of widens as you go to go down the hill. I planted those in there in three to a pot kind of like with the hill idea i don't know if it's going to work but we're going to try and if it starts to look like they're getting crowded out or they're not doing quite as well then i'll go ahead and clip some of the start some of the clip some of the roosters if i have to go ahead and clip some of the the starts the seedlings so that it can grow properly so what we got here i had this wonderful beautiful kohlrabi that has been growing in my garden for a while now and then yesterday came out to that so frustrating so still waiting on some kohlrabi haven't had been able to taste it yet i have had a lot of the rutabagas and a lot of turnips not a lot i mean i've had like 10 maybe anyway so we have beets growing here this one is going crazy but i still i don't see an actual beet coming out of the ground so i don't know what's going on in there we do still have some more kohlrabi growing and it's just it looks like it's just starting to bold here and it looks like it is gonna need some <laughs> ah man that thing is covered in aphids i'm gonna have to, gonna have to address the aphid issue and we just have some tomatoes over here we have a lot of tomatillo flowers that have fallen but we also have a couple that have actually taken. So that's pretty cool. Quite a few actually, more than I realized. And with the stuff that we planted inside, I had one, one of the seedlings that did exceptionally well, and that was a gray zucchini. So I went ahead and I was like, all right, I'll go ahead and just plant it outside ahead of the rest of them. Slugs, got to it, darn it. Slugs in my area are just the worst they're so difficult to deal with it's so frustrating i'm just like Rah. okay so down here we got the beans they're doing pretty okay these are the ones that are hopefully are gonna these ones aren't putting out any tendrils yet i fairly i thought that they were a vining one but it looks like they might be a bush and had quite a few that have been eaten by slugs 
This Markimore cucumber seems like it wants to make a comeback. With everything that's planted inside, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna plant all of the bare spots throughout the actual, the established garden that we have already. I'm gonna fill those in with the seedlings that we have inside and then whatever's left over, we're gonna plant in that garden over there. And we're really starting to get quite a bit of fruit set here. You can see here, this one is a gobstopper cherry tomato and a lot of the beans that we had planted in these little holes, not every single one, but quite a lot of them are really starting to take off. These are the bush beans. So, and then you can see several of these have actually overstretched the trellising. <laughs> so they're quite tall. And this one is the Matt's Crazy Cherry Tomato. We got some really sad basil in there. It's just hanging on for dear life, trying to find some sun. And we are getting quite a lot of, finally, some a lot of fruit set. I think my going through and kind of just tapping them and shaking them. Robert does it every once in a while as well. I think that's really starting to pay off and helping it to germinate. Here we have Lufa, a what was Lufa, and a bunch more beans. These ones are actually starting, these ones have actual tendrils that are starting to grow up. So this one makes me think even further, given that they're smaller, it makes me think that the other one is definitely a bush bean. <laughs> so anyways, uh, this one is getting attacked by slugs. We have so many slugs, I just, uh, I don't even know what to do about it. If y'all have any advice on how to organically, preferably non-spray, keep bugs, or not bugs, well yeah, bugs, but keep slugs out of my garden. It is just the worst. So if you guys have any tips on things that are organic that can help me to alleviate my slug problem, please let me know down below, please. All right, so then we have a bunch more, lots of flowers, lots of flowers all over. And these ones have overreached the trellis as well. And we got lots of beans going on. Lots and lots of beans. These are tongues of fire. I think a chicken's laying an egg over there somewhere. I don't know if you can hear that. And this one got some more fruit set going on. This one's quite, got quite a lot. That one is the, uh, another gobstopper, that's funny. And this one is a gold, Cher gold nugget cherry tomato this one has quite a few and these ones i think might be starting to turn pretty quick pretty soon i mean it is just a cherry tomato so i mean it's not like it's going to grow huge and then ooh, turn you around on the other side here we have some tamarillos i don't have a clue what this thing's supposed to do but it's looking beautiful and has nice velvety leaves yeah we got some uh, nasturtiums growing in there we got some more sad basil over there a whole bunch of beans. This one, a lot of them have sprouted up. Okay, almost every one. So these ones are doing great. And these are contender beans. Let's see if we can find, let's see if we can find any more fruit over here, shall we? I know I saw some, oh, right here. Here's some, another, this is another golden cherry nugget tomato. This one has a bunch of them on there. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Hartman's yellow gooseberry has some. We're just, I'm so, ooh. This one is a Napa Chardonnay. There's a couple hiding back there. I don't know if you can see them. But I'm really getting excited because these, all of this work that I've been putting into the, all of these is finally starting to show. And it is so difficult to sit here and wait and watch just a cherry tomato try and ripen. I can't even imagine once I'm actually, you know, had the cherry tomatoes and I'm sitting here trying to wait for those big giant tomatoes like it's going to be forever. Down here is what I'm kind of talking about. I ran some string, uh, some yarn down to the actual beans and then I kind of very loosely tied them on. Same kind of principle as trying to trellis the tomatoes. Hopefully they will grow up the string and then they're attached to the run rung that I want it to grow up. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a try. Certainly be better than just letting them filet on the ground. And these ones are thin to bagnol beans, and they're doing pretty okay. They got eaten a little bit here and there, but nothing too crazy, so they stood up pretty well. The other side is a totally different story. That one's almost bare. I mean, really, it's just watching all of these 
behemoth plants growing and it's pretty cool uh, this this kind of bean is a little bit slower to this is a land landeth bean this one's a little bit slower to actually germinate these basils actually aren't doing too terribly on this side we have two of them over here i have a bunch i have a bunch more basil started in the house i can't stand basil i think it smells like a dirty sock but people love it <laughs> i don't i don't get it but my husband really enjoys it so i grow i try and grow a lot of basil for him but we just haven't had a whole lot of luck this year but hopefully it'll get better Ooh, this one's got a pretty color to the leaf here this is a kentucky wonder bean and it's the only one with that color to the leaf, so I think it might not be a Kentucky Wonder Bean. All the rest are just green. <laughs> it's either diseased or it's not a Kentucky Wonder Bean. That's my guess. But it's pretty. And hopefully not diseased. And here are the carrots. These are doing pretty well. I've actually, they've only grown to be about this big and very, very browned. Like, almost like those Parisian carrots, the uh, really tiny, tiny ones. I had two of them. They're pretty tasty. This particular row of tomatoes is not the most productive. It is pretty fairly tall. It's starting to grow, it's starting to take off, but it's not anything, it's not gonna knock your socks off. And it seems like each tomato kind of, oh, I take that back. There's some fruit back there, I just saw it. Right back here. So, um, but that's the only fruit really on this particular side of this wall of tomatoes. There are some fruits but nothing crazy, but it does seem maybe it's maybe it's starting to come back. Maybe it just was grumpy at first and now it's, it's starting to uh, get in a better mood here. With the tomatoes, I have just the cattle panel trellis. That's the only trellising system that I have currently. And I'm just kind of coming along. You can see I'm kind of weaving it in and out, but I'm, I think I'm gonna start to go away from weaving them in and out. Some of the ones that I have tried to weave in and out and not been very careful with it have seemed to be coming down with some kind of a disease and I'll show you on this side I think that's where this is where it is yeah this one's a San Marzano and I think this here is the culprit of what's causing that so I think I'm probably gonna be pulling this tomato here probably today and maybe replacing it with something because I'm pretty sure that's like might be a spreadable disease. I don't know if it's blight, but I don't want rest of my tomatoes to get that. So I'm probably gonna be pulling that today, unfortunately. And there are a couple of other tomatoes that have that issue, like right here, because this one is on the actual stem. That's why I feel like I need to actually remove the, potato, the tomato. This one over here, you can, I don't know if you can see that, but let me pull this leaf. This one is like this. So I'm not sure what the cause is on this one, but uh, I certainly don't want to sit around and wait. So I'm going to go ahead and get this over to where I can get it into the burn pile. I know that I know there's some people out there, um, especially even Charles Doughty, who says that the diseases and things like that don't really matter when in when you're composting. I'm not one of those people I don't want to spread that those kind of diseases and I'm not good enough at composting to know how to get it hot enough to burn off anything. Well actually I think he was saying that I think it pretty sure that he was saying that the heat only matters for the seeds. It doesn't matter for the the disease because if you compost it down enough then there's no there's no plant matter for the disease to feed on and so it just dies off. But either way I'm not gonna risk it. We're gonna start at the beginning where we were. And so this side of the same trellis seems to be doing a lot better. This one has quite, I mean, apart from that one dead one, but this one has quite a lot of fruits. This is a quadro. And this is also just like kind of canning paste tomatoes, things like that, but yeah. So, so I, I'm pretty confident that that this kind of disease thing, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's my fault and I just have not been trellising properly. Like you can see, like I probably should have taken this leaf and put it above the bar and that might've prevented that problem, but it's, it's hard to say. 
So then over here we have some more beans. This is a Chinese red noodle bean. So this one obviously is definitely a runner bean. And then over here is a double yield cucumber. And this one is putting out its little tendrils and trying to find the trellis up there. So I need to run a string down here so that it can find the trellis. Okay, this one's got some great, great tomatoes going here. I should probably not touch stuff after I touch that. But this one especially, oh my goodness. This is an Azoichka tomato. Wow, some of these things are hard to pronounce. And this one is very sad. This is the Christmas lima beans. <laughs> I got one. I planted the whole package in here because I came through, well, two technically, but that one's probably not going to make it. But I planted the whole package in here over two separate, separate times. Oh, 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 there's one. Okay. So we might be getting more than just one. So I don't like lima beans. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I don't know if I like lima beans. It's never really been, I've always been subject to the the stigma of it and my sister's like no you have to grow lima beans so i was like all right i'll get the prettiest lima beans and then we'll see if it tastes good so that's why i got that one and then this wall is it also cherry tomatoes it is really starting to do pretty well this is a principe borscht this is supposed to be one that's really good for sun drying it's a cherry tomato and just all kinds of hiding things in here all sorts lots and lots of different i'm super excited i'm so excited gonna have my first tomato before too long potatoes starting to die back uh this is this is one that robert had um he laid down cardboard underneath it and just put dirt on top of it and buried some potatoes he held it up one or two times, I think. I'm not sure. It looks like one or two times. And uh, they're just starting to die back. And they're definitely... Uh, the slugs really seem to enjoy it. And whatever that is. I don't know. Some weird orange bug. So, hopefully the potatoes on the inside are doing okay. <laughs> and the, the peppers over here in the palette are really starting to take off. They're probably at least a foot tall, most of them, and they're just doing really well. Starting to put on flowers and just uh, rocking it. And then over here we have, again, just more tomato flowers. There's tomato flowers everywhere. It's so cool. And this is like, like fox something, silver fir. Why do I keep saying fox? It's a silver, free, silver fir tree tomato. And this one has got some fruit setting on there. And just a whole bunch. This is a black creme tomato. And again, just more bush beans planted. Did the whole area. The whole, every bed has the same pattern. Okay. And these ones are really starting to, to go. This is rattlesnake bean. And then with a be it alpha and a Japanese climbing cucumber right there. So this one is really, really, really doing well. And then I came through the other day and replanted the ones that had been eaten. And so I think those ones are just starting to sprout up. Fill in all the blank spaces. Again, slugs, they're everywhere. So this is a triple crop. This one's doing pretty good. And then this one is a Tiffin Mennonite. This one has some pretty good amount of big flowers to it. And this one, this one here. Oh, this is a triple crop. I think this is what everybody talks about. <laughs> and then this one, let's see if we can find the tag. Amana Amon tomato. Pretty good. Super excited. So we are moving on to more tomatoes over here. This is a Sheboygan tomato. 
and then we have sweetie tomatoes these ones are doing really well i'm kind of, i'm almost wondering if this is supposed to be a cherry tomato because i don't actually know but it has like it just has a tremendous number of side shoots side leaves here and just a lot more than like the other ones maybe like twice as dense so maybe it is a cherry tomato and i don't know there we go this one is an abe lincoln tomato this one i'm kind of excited about should be interesting it's supposed to be really really big tomatoes there you go. And then this one is getting a pretty a good amount of fruit set. This is also a sweetie tomato. They do. They just look like little sweetie tomatoes. Okay. Oop. This one's going crazy. That's probably why I have diseased tomatoes. Um, I think I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> I should probably grab my snippers, especially for one that big. Because that's leaving a really big. I'll probably go through after we're done with this and I'll snip it off to make it a nice, neat little break. But yeah, so I mean, we've reached the end of basically the end of Tomato Alley. Never mind, we have a whole another bed of it. Anyways, more potatoes planted exactly the same. Uh, these ones are, again, just the cardboard with dirt on top and planted potatoes in it and hilled it every once in a while. That's all I did with that. Over here, the tomatoes. These ones were planted much much later than the rest of them but they're really starting to make a comeback or they're really starting to do very very well and they are need to desperately need to be trimmed up <laughs> i don't i don't tend to this one tremendously much because they were just so little and i was like oh you know what's what's a couple of side shoots you know that's what a couple side shoots is. And then the rest of the bed is basically filled with peppers, which are really starting, they've kind of started to really reach their, their uh, potential growth pattern. And these ones also are about the same as the, 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 uh, the other, the palette. And they're about a foot tall. Some of them are starting to put off some flowers and they're just making me a lot happier than they were last week. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> they're not amazing but they're definitely doing pretty well and then in between again these are the radishes right here and then the um, beets are starting to grow here is a red Russian which is really just starting to take off since last week it's doing pretty good fairly clean I found a couple little aphids on it the ones that I ate for breakfast yesterday but nothing nothing really crazy and then some uh, dwarf blue scotch kale. And then we have some chard, some flowers, straw flowers, and Golgardia, I think those are. And these ones are just some summer squash that are really starting to take off. I'm super stoked about that one. And then over here again, these ones were planted significantly later than those bad boys up there. And they had just, we ran out of soil and we ran out of, of mulch. So the beds are not completely full and they're not mulched at all. We'll see how they go. It's kind of a good comparison and we'll see what happens because I don't know. But yeah, I have all of these kind of trained to go up to hit the pole so they don't all fall over because they were all falling over. You can see here, it was just doing all kinds of weird stuff. So you can see down here, I just tied it very, very loosely onto the stem here so that it has plenty of room to grow. And then I just kind of swirled it up the stem until it reaches here. And then this is where we'll kind of begin to either tie it off, which I think is probably the direction I'm starting to want to go in, very loosely tie it off with some t tomato tape and then let it grow up. And so that's about all I did with pretty much all of them. They were all just starting to to fall over, to keel over into the dirt. And so, except this one, this one's going strong. This one is a Cosmic Eclipse tomato, which I love. Oh my gosh, they're so tasty. Also in here, we have a bunch more beets and things growing. This is Early Wonder. I just kind of planted them along the edge here. And those ones are just really starting to take off. Every tea post marks a new variety of beet. And Right here is a, oh, that's a blue cream cherries. Yay. I lost the tag that goes to these ones. I don't know. Oh, oh and here's a Cherokee purple and a blue gold berries cherry tomato. Yeah. And then just in the middle, there's three rows of radishes, all different kinds. There's a Helios, a Zlata, which I can't stand, and a Chinese red meat radish. 
So we're going into the last area of our garden and that is the in-ground part, the current only in-ground part. So in the beginning, when we, when we first planted this, we were having some nibbling issues. And so I, I was thankfully able to alleviate that by putting, surrounding it with a Premier One electric fence. That seems to be doing the trick, keeping the little bunny rabbits out of this garden and possibly also the fact that it's all squash and melons and things like that. But there are still some things that are eating it. But I would say for the most part, I mean, these things are doing phenomenal. Let me show you what we got here, okay? I mean, these things are really taking off. This is a, what is this? Oh, Yakima Marblehead Hubbard. Pretty big. I mean, that thing's probably a foot and a quarter tall. And then we have an orange butternut. These leaves are really, like the bottom side's kind of spiky, but then the top is like velvety. And then here is a kabucha squash. This is one of my husband's favorites. He loves kabucha and like the carnival acorn and delicata. But I think the kabucha is one of his favorites, followed by the delicata, possibly the delicatas first. I don't know. He just likes the really sweet squashes. Yellow crookneck. So this one's gonna be a summer squash. This one's doing pretty good. It's pretty big. You know, it's not too shabby. And this one, sweet meat. So I've never grown a lot of the squashes that we have growing in here. Pretty much most of them. Like I've grown the delicata, not very successfully, but that's about it. And we also grew, I think we tried to grow acorn, but I don't think we were successful at it. We don't have a tremendous amount of luck in the past with gardening, but I think this year is proving to be, hopefully our luck has changed and hopefully things will be doing well. But I think also part of it is just that I have made the time and the effort to actually come out here like every day, several times a day, tend everything, make sure that I'm, I'm um, using, you know, just doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing and just tending it more. So I think that's probably why it's doing so much better. Okay. So what is this lovely guy here? Spaghetti squash. Can spaghetti squash vine? Or can it climb? I didn't know that. It's got a bunch of tendrils on it. I wonder if it will actually go up a trellis. Ooh, that opens up so many different possibilities. I'm excited. Okay, so we have a blue Hubbard squash, which somehow is different than a blue, um, the Yakima something okay i don't know so we have there's actually oh this one's not looking super happy here this is a howden pumpkin whoopsie i moved it i'm trying to get it to climb that way um just because there's open space i'm trying to get these things to grow in the direction that i want them to grow when they're young so hopefully when they get a little bit older maybe they'll do what i tell them to do hey here Another spaghetti squash with a bunch of tendrils. Oh, I'm so curious about that. If any of you guys know down below if spaghetti squash will actually climb up a trellis, let me know. A sturdy trellis, of course, but a trellis nonetheless. And down here is where we have the absolute most loss of any of the transplants. These are where I put the smaller, kind of like I was going to do cucumbers and a lot of the smaller kind of melons and... Um, squashes like delicatas things like that that when I planted them I believed that they were going to climb and then I found it otherwise they actually grow from what I read they grow more like a summer squash and they don't like fine and spread like the other ones New England sugar pie pumpkin stoked about that one I'm not a hundred percent sure but I'm pretty sure that that was one of the ones that Jess over at even the Sparrow Homestead gave me um, so she gave me a nice little package of a bunch of different ones and it was really sweet. Here's a gray zucchini. This one's doing really well. This is the one up in the garden that actually got eaten the other day. And then we have a Connecticut field pumpkin. There's no way this one will vine or go up a trellis. What? Do all squashes get those tendrils on there? I've never grown these. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm making it up as I go. Costa, Costa Romanesco zucchini. I'm 
Jardale pumpkin. This is going to be like the really big kind of gray Cinderella-ish type of, of, of squash. And a Costa Romanesco, another one. And then you can see along here, this one actually did well. This is a, like a midget something. A mini something. Mini? No, it's a midget pump. Midget watermelon. And then you can see like probably on average every other one in this row died. Except this one, one, two, three in a row died. And then you got one good one. And so this row down here at the bottom, for whatever reason, just got eaten like crazy. Some of them died of natural causes, but for the most part, they were eaten by something likely slugs, possibly bunny rabbits in the beginning. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, the rest of the garden, like there's one, two, three. There's three in the whole rest of the garden that are not in this first row. Only three of them are actually dead. And then there's two more that are hanging on for dear life. So five total in the rest of the whole garden. The rest of them are doing pretty darn well, I would say. I'm really pleased with how well these are taken off. And then some of them, you know, are a little more stunted than others. But they're doing great, I think. And then this bottom row, at least half of them are dead. I guess I shouldn't say at least half, but definitely at least a third, if not more, are dead. So I don't know what's up with the bottom row here. Maybe it's just proximity to where pests can get to them. It's easier. They don't have to climb as far or crawl as far, but that's a thing. So a lot of the starts that we have inside are gonna be going into this garden. Uh, they might not be like exact replacements as to what I planted originally, but whatever. We only have so much time before our first frost and I want to make sure that I get a good crop in. I hope that you enjoyed this latest garden tour, got to see how things are coming along. Today it is the end of July, someday in the end of July. It, it's, it's Monday. <laughs> I really don't have any clue what date it is. Thanks for joining me on a walk through my garden today. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you are enjoying following the process of a brand new garden growing the first year. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Bye.